this shows the part what we are meant to be seeing basically i didn't want to show any unnecessary things so um it's almost time to start i'm just going to wait about five more minutes and then we can start so if other people want to join other people can join hi amy hi chikodi hi hannah hi natalie omolara hello yeah you sent me a message on instagram hi veronica hi rashida it's so nice to have every one of you here so i'm just going to wait a few more minutes because i decided to start this early so i could set up and just you know i hope you guys can see me clearly though because yeah it's suddenly a bit dark the weather in the uk is so annoying but anyway how are you guys doing so i'm so excited about today's live and guys i'm going to be honest i've been nervous i don't know why i've just been a bit nervous but um this is the fabric i decided to go with give me a minute okay this is the fabric i decided to go with so i got this fabric from minerva and this is soft crepe even though it 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 was a bit softer than i thought <laughs> yeah um i'm from nigeria i'm nigerian and crepe in nigeria at least this one in nigeria we'll call soft no thick chiffon but yeah this is soft crepe it's not see-through which is a good thing because i don't want to line this i want to make it really beginner friendly so we won't be lining it and i have my interfacing here for the waistband you know because the fabric is really soft i need to give the waistband some structure and it's even a good thing like with waistbands and you know pockets and facings it's a good practice to use facing to just reinforce those areas so we'll be using the waistband the interfacing for the waistband and this is the fabric we're using i have my calculator here as well because we are cutting a circle skirt well for this i'm going to be cutting a circle skirt you don't have to make yours a circle skirt you can make yours a you know um pleated skirt or gathered skirt just cut a very long strip of fabric and gather it to your waist but i'm making mine a circle skirt so i need the calculator but i'll be telling you guys how to do the measurements and everything so we're just going to wait um let me see just about four more minutes and then we'll start we'll start we'll just start even if nobody gets here even if more people don't join yes thanks natalie hi from hi veronica or oh, from barbados um that's a place i would really love to visit like yeah but is it barbados or barbados i think it's barbados please correct me veronica just let me know the the right pronunciation yeah i would love to visit maybe when i do visit i'll reach out to you and we can meet up hopefully when covid is a thing of the past fingers crossed so we'll see so three more minutes anyway i think everybody knows my name already my name is remy some people call me zainab and i'm actually a self-taught pattern drafter so i taught myself how to draft patterns i had like an informal training on how to sew for about three months and um so in nigeria we have something called nysc that's the national youth service corps and before i went for my national youth service corps after my bsc i was at home for a while so i picked up sewing and you know i learned from a family friend for about three months before i went off to serve and i never went back so i just kept you know self-practicing self-developing i learned a lot from youtube which was actually why i decided to start my on youtube channel yes veronica it'd be a pleasure to meet you um yeah i've seen you comment on a lot of my videos thank you for your constant support honestly i do not take anyone for granted i really appreciate you guys so yes um like i was saying i started i learned a lot on youtube so when i got to the point where i felt like i could start to impart knowledge and you know teach people what i know i just knew i had to start a youtube channel because youtube really helped me you know in my own sewing growth so yes i hope 
I, I hope you guys find my videos helpful. Feel free to reach out to me anytime, honestly. Like, I'm always willing and happy to help out. So, hi, Diola. Yay. So, just one minute to go. So, I will also be showing you guys the measurements you need to take for this um, infinity dress. You actually need just two measurements. Yeah, so this is very beginner friendly as well which is why I chose this. So for my live sessions, um, just before this live, I was saying, oh my God, <laughs> this is so, like, I was so nervous. I'm like, was this a good idea? But now that I've started, I'm enjoying it. So maybe there will be another one. We never know. And for that one, yeah, I would also pick a beginner friendly style because I like to pick beginner friendly styles. So, you know, you don't stay yet the whole day because we all know sewing can take a while. So the difference between this one and the previous one is that we'll be having a little bit more, basically we'll be using some more sewing techniques than in the, you know, in the past life that we did. And we'll also be attaching a zipper. So yes, I'll be showing you guys how to attach a zipper. I've shown it a lot of times in my videos, but now I'll be showing you in live and direct. And this zipper is actually too long, but I'll cut it short. This was all I could get, yeah, when locked down. So I just have to make do with what I have. Okay, so yes, I think it's time to start. So you guys may not be able to see my face, but the most important thing that you need to see is the table. And as long as you're seeing the table, don't worry about my face. So I'm going to move this this way so i can have enough space to you know work here so i have three meters of fabric here actually and the length of this fabric isn't very long so it's about 44 inches lengthwise so basically i'm going to be cutting two pieces for my circle skirt but so you can cut it as one continuous piece but because of the length of this fabric by the time i fold it like this I won't have enough here to cut the length of my skirt. So instead, I'll be cutting to a front separate piece and then back separate piece. And then I'll be attaching my zipper by the side. So I hope you guys understand. So now to start, um, you need to take your waist measurement and decide on the length you want for your skirt. So for me, my waist measurement is 26 inches. So, waist is 26 inches. Now, remember, we are having two separate skirts, so we need to think about seam allowance for joining the front and the back together. Rather, we're having two separate pieces for the front and the back, so we need to think of seam allowance. So, I'm going to use half inch for my seam allowance. So, half inch for the front on both sides, that's one inch. Half inch on the back for both sides, that's two inch. So, I need an extra two inches for seam allowance. So that's plus two inches. So that'll be 28 inches. Now we all know the formula for, hi Dong, hi Hannah, hi Linda. It's nice to have you guys here. So the formula for calculating a circle skirt, when you're having a full circle skirt, is circumference equals two by R. Now circumference is the, you know, your waist, circumference like the measurement you get when you measure around your waist or around wherever you want you know the circle to sit so for me now my circumference is 28 inches equal um 2 pi r so i'm just going to r is a constant which is 3.214 i believe thank god for google guys what is r I use this all the time, but almost every time I still have to check and remember what R is. I mean, what pi is rather. Pi is a constant, not R. 3.142, yes. So that would be 28 equals 2 times 3.142 times R. So basically, I'm trying to get my R. So 3 times 2 point, no, 2 times 3.142. That's 6.28 basically. 
Oh yeah, so there's one thing. Most times when you measure your circle skirt, after you cut it, you realize you have excess. And this is because, you know, by the time you cut it, there's a bit of stretch that we don't account for. So there's this textbook I use, Pattern Making for Fashion Designers by Ellen Joseph Armstrong. And it's an amazing book. But yes, in that book, she says, minus one from whatever measurement you get. So in this case, 28, before you now get the radius. That way you sort of take care of the, you know, the stretch. So I will do that, 28 minus 1, that's 27, then divided by 6.28. So now, my radius is 4.29, I'm just going to approximate to 4.3, yeah, but mm, I will just use 4.3 over 8. Okay, so now that I have my radius... If you were, if you had, if your skirt was long enough, if the length of your skirt was long enough, what you could do was fold this this way in two like this, and then fold it again this way. So you have like four layers of fabric, and then you measure your your radius from this corner here, and then you measure the length. But I'm not doing it that way. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to fold my fabric in half. If you guys have any questions, please ask. Yes, Amrachi, you can't see my face because um, I want you guys to be able to see the table clearly, to see what I'm doing. So for this, what you need to do is see what I'm doing or what you need to see is what I'm doing, basically. So, yes. I know you guys don't see my, I mean, my fine face, but okay, let me not blow my own, toot my own on. So for this kind of fabric, you just need to decide where you want the right side and the wrong side to be because they are like so similar. So I'm just going to start working and wherever I start working with will be my right side. So basically, I want my skirt to be about 20 inches long. Let me just check that that's not too short. In fact, I think that's too long. So, yeah, I want my skirt to be about 20 inches long. So now, to determine how wide I need this place to be, it needs to be the length of my skirt plus my, what I got when I calculated. That's my radius. So 4.3 plus 20 inches. So I need this place to be at least 25 inches before I can cut. So when you're working with this kind of fabric, it's very important to just make sure you pin, like pins are your best friend because it's such a smooth and, and light fabric. Yeah, it will move around really easily. Okay. out of the way hi Christiana thanks for joining us if you have any questions let me know so so far I've just folded my fabric in half and I want to start the cutting process for the circle skirt I've also calculated my hi bookie sorry about the network i've also calculated my radius so my radius is 4.29 and the formula for calculating the radius is circumference equals to pi r so someone can please type that in the comment section for other people that may be coming afterwards so now what you want to do is from this corner and you need to work from this corner but before i start i'm just going to remove my Selvedge here because I don't want that in my garment. So I 
should be playing music or something so it's not just quiet when I'm not talking. Anyway, so now I'm, I'll just go ahead and cut off this edge. We don't want that. So now I'm just measuring my radius from this corner. I hope you guys can see me. So you want to make sure you have the tip of your edge, the tip of your tip here, rather the edge of your tip, just there. And then so that's it. now from this place i'll measure the length of my skirt so i want my skirt to be 20 inches but i'm just going to measure 21 inches so the one inch extra is for allowance yes allowance for the lower part to you know finish the m and honestly i'm even thinking 20 inches feels a bit long okay let's stick to 20 inches you can always reduce the length, but you can't increase it once you've cut it out. So, adding one inch. And now you'll be taking that measurement from this point here. Another thing you can do is just add the length of your radius, which in my case was 4.3 to this. And then, you know, take that measurement. So, I find that easier. So, I'm just going to do that. So the more points you mark, the easier it is for you to join this together when it's time. Okay. We're almost done. Finally. <laughs> Hi, it's Ohan. Thanks for joining me. So now you just want to go ahead and connect these points that you've made together. And this is why I said the more points you make, the easier it is for you to join it. Can you see? Because it's just easy to connect them. They are close by. So now once all is said and done, I'm just going to smooth in out this fabric because, yeah, I'm just pinning it down. And now I'll go ahead and cut it out. Cutting this out first. <sighs> so 
So now, before you cut out the upper part, you know, we need to think of seam allowance to join this to the waistband. So I'm just going to add half inch from this point that we mark towards the top. Can you guys see? So that's what you want to do. So this way, you've added seam allowance for the top of the skirt. Okay, so this is one half of the skirt. So this is the front of the skirt. It's folded in two so you guys can see. This is basically one half of my front waist. So now I'll just go ahead and cut the other part of the skirt. And this is the part where if this was a perfumed video, I would just skip through all of this second part more. Sorry guys, you guys are stuck with me. So we may as well enjoy each other's company. But what do you guys think of this fabric I eventually chose? And guys, don't forget, I actually still have two, um, three yards of Ankara fabric going to two people that will be randomly chosen at the end of this live. So make sure you stay with us till the end. And shipping will be covered by me, like wherever you live, or as long as it's easy to ship there, shipping will be covered by me. So now basically go ahead and do the same thing I did again to cut the other part of this part. So when working with this type of fabric, like trust me, I really just want to rush through this ball. You shouldn't do that because it's like such a soft fabric, you will just mess it up. So just take your time, really. So next you want to go ahead, place this again and basically just make sure it aligns. You want to place folded edges on folded edges basically. The folded edge here, you want to place it on the folded edge here. everything down so 
So if you have any questions as to why I'm doing something a certain way, please feel free to ask. And yes, let me know if you'll be recreating this dress. Well, maybe when we are done and you see how beautiful it is, you're like, yes, I'm going to make my own. Okay, why do you keep falling down? We have done cutting the circle part and the other parts are actually like really straightforward. So now you need to cut your waistband. So for this, basically, you want to cut parallel to the selvage. So I'm just going to make, cut my waistband from here. I'm going to fold this to make sure I'm not cutting along this stretchy part at all because you want your waistband to be firm. And you just need to decide. Hi, Tutu. Welcome. And you just need to decide how, you know, wide you want your waistband to be. Are you working with two inches or one and a half inches? Mm -hmm. Personally, I like to work with about one three quarter of an inch, which doesn't make much sense because, I mean, you may as well work with two inches. Let me see, what's the size of this waistband? Yep, one three quarter of an inch. I knew it. So, I'll work with one three quarter of an inch. And for the waistband, we're going to cut two separate pieces, so one for the front and one for the facing on the inside. And you need to cut your waistband the length of your waist measurements. Like your waistband will be equal your waist measurements. I hope that makes sense. Plus sewing allowance. So remember, we worked with 28 inches for this because we had included sewing allowance. So that is exactly what I'm going to. So for this, I'm going to work with 27 inches actually, not 28 inches because we don't need to join the waistband by this side. We only need to join the waistband by this side. And since I'm using half inch each for my allowance, so that's half inch for, you know, each side. So I only need 27 inches. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. If you don't understand, just ask. And for the waistband, honestly, it doesn't even matter if you cut excess. Like, if you are in doubt, just cut a very long strip and then trim it off when you're done. Instead of having, you know, not enough. So, yes, I have more than enough here. So, I'm just going to pin everything down. So 
now I'm going to be cutting two and a half inches. No, let me calculate that. So 1.75 plus 0.5 plus 0.5 to three quarter of an inch. And the reason I'm doing that is because basically, remember I said I'm cutting two separate pieces, one for the front and one for the back. I need to join them together. So I need half an inch on top to join them together. And then I need to join them to the skirt. So I need half an inch underneath to join them to the skirt. So that's why I'm adding an extra one inch. So I'm cutting two, three quarter of an inch for the waistband. Okay, so now I cut this on fold basically. So I've cut both the facing and the you know the outer part of the waistband. So I'll just go ahead now and divide it. So that's it for the waistband now the last thing we need to cut is the infinity detail of this dress which is the wrap that you know you can tie in multiple ways and for this you basically just need to decide how long you want it to be and the width of this would be a quarter of your waist measurement so my waist measurement again is 26 divided by four that's six and a half and I'm just going to add about one inch or about half an inch because you want it to overlap a bit in front here. So I'm going to add one inch and then, yeah, I can just pleat any excess that I have to just from like a style. So that's 7.5. And for this, I'm going to cut it on fold. If you don't have enough fabric, you can just cut it and then finish the edge. But I just think it's nicer to cut it on fold and then, you know, just yeah have a nicer detail like a nicer finishing basically so seven and a half i'm going to add half an inch because i need to join the other parts that isn't going to be on fold so that will be eight inches hmm. i just hope i have enough fabric for this why should be enough well we'll see so now i'm making mine 55 inches i just want to make sure it's long enough for me to manipulate and take to the front and bring basically just do as i want with it yes so while i had the two long straps and the main part of this you know it's really what sets it apart from its pairs so again we've been through this a long time you just fold pin i mean we've been through this enough time rather 
and you can do this with Ankara. I think it will even be easier to work with Ankara to do this because it's just Ankara is a very easy fabric to work with, honestly. That's why I love it. It's just perfect for beginners. And the thing with sewing is most times, eh, like cutting actually takes a lot of time more than the sewing itself because you just want to get it right. Like if you don't get the cutting right, honestly, well, miracles do happen, but it's honestly just harder once you don't get that part right. Which is one of the reasons I actually decided to, you know, really learn pattern drafting because trust me freehand cutting wasn't like freehand cutting is really fun i don't know not fun it's really quick and really easy and you know there are some things i still use freehand cutting for honestly like if i'm making a simple crop top i know it's just a crop top like what could go wrong or you know if i'm making something that doesn't need so much manipulation I still do free and cutting, but with pattern drafting, you can really, you know, just put in all the detail, make sure everything is right before you actually go into cut. And I think you get better results. But again, it really depends on what you're making. Like the last peplum top I made on my channel, I used free and cutting for that. And it's peplum top, it's something that I've made like so many times, so many times, many times. It doesn't have H. So many times, so really, I, I didn't mind doing that with freehand cutting, which is one of the benefits I think of knowing how to, you know, use both, both freehand and pattern drafting. And I think my knowledge of pattern drafting has also like just made my freehand better. But there are some things I know now, and I know the reason behind them. So I just do them, even though those were not the things I was taught. But I know, oh, you know, doing this would actually make a lot of difference. So I just do it. I'm just going to go in now and cut my rather mark my eight inches. God, yes, Hannah, this fabric is very stressful, but I chose this fabric. Actually, I wanted a light drapey fabric because I think it just has a nice feel. It actually adds to the charm and, you know, elegance of the dress. And even though it's, it's stressful, this fabric is really pretty. Like, it has a very nice drape and it just flows really well. Like I pinned it on my mannequin yesterday on my dress form and I'm like, this is so pretty. Actually, I got three colors, but I'm going to return the, the other two because I think this one is nice because it's it's a dark color. The others just don't look as nice. So I'll return them, maybe get something else or get my money back. Like, I'm pretty sure we're using Ankara by now. We'd have finished cutting this thing, but we're almost done. Still. 
just going to keep cutting you see even with all my pinning okay sorry the fabric did not do anything wrong it was me so this is for one part of the oh, okay i'm getting ahead of myself but you guys can already see anyway i need to cut another one of this <laughs> guys it's looking like i've run out of fabric <laughs> okay i don't think so yeah because okay well last last we'll join it it's just looking like we may not be able to cut one long continuous strip but i have enough fabric on the other side that we can join it together repeat we're basically just going to do the same thing we just did for the other part pin it down and yeah cut it out and i think this would be really nice for a scrunchie so i think i'm gonna make a scrunchie with whatever is left here So you can actually also just put the other piece we just cut directly on this but honestly to start thinking of pinning mm -mm, i will just measure it and another thing to make this a bit easier is to cut it on paper and then just take your time pin the paper to the fabric i don't know if that will make it easier but that's just a suggestion guys if you're working with fabric like this So I don't know what we have here, but I'm just going to cut it anyway. I'll measure it after cutting it. And, but just by looking at it, I can tell it's not long enough. I need to go in and cut from another side and then sew it together. For people like what do you guys think about getting a cutting mat and a rotary cutter because i'm really thinking of investing in one i think it will make cutting way easier and faster if you have one let me know what you think and if you're also thinking of trying one just let me know so i can know if there are a lot of these boats Six, we need about 10 more inches. It's just about, it's just almost enough. And guys, like, we've practically finished the fabric, so definitely, like, 
I think if you are bigger than me, or if you'll be making a longer skirt, maybe get four meters, not three meters, because the three meters, not it we, we finish the three meters. I'm just going to measure out 11 inches. So, do you think it's like a good investment? Because I just think it will make cutting easier and faster. Because, so especially sometimes I tend to get bruises from my scissors, so I'm just considering it. Maybe that's the next now investing. I'm just gonna throw this on the floor so we can have space here. I'm just gonna clear this place. Don't worry, guys, I'll sweep when I'm done. Why are you guys looking at me like, ah, she's just throwing things on the floor. I think that's the annoying part about sewing. You have to sweep every day. You know? So, here we have our long pieces. I need to join this to this to make one continuous piece. Here we have the waistband. And here we have the skirt pieces. So you can go a step further and add pockets for for the sake of this tutorial and for the sake of all of us here, like we've been cutting for long enough. Yeah, so I'm just going to <laughs> not add pockets. And yes, um, Natalie, I think I'm, I agree with you. I'll get one as well. So now there's just one last thing we need to do before we can start sewing. And that is to fuse this with interfacing. So I have this here. I've had this for like a very long time, honestly brought it from Nigeria. I got like a lot. So ideally, I would say use black if you have black, but I don't have black. So I'm just going to use this white one. And yeah, the fabric is in citrus, thankfully. So it will work. So I'm fusing both the top and bottom because this fabric is really light. Really, really light. Okay, this is the right side. And guys, here's the thing. I've mixed this up, but it's almost identical. I don't even care. So now I'm just going to cut out my interface, interfacing, and sometimes when I'm working with heavier fabrics that I want to interface, I just interface the fabric itself minus the seam allowance, but for this it doesn't matter because this fabric practically is weightless, well it's not that bad, it's not like too low, you know. Or it, I don't think this is medium weight. It's more like weight weight, guys.
So I was actually thinking of doing this off camera, like fusing the interfacing, but I'm like, I mean, the point of this is to show everyone like the start to finish process. So I decided to just do it here. And we've almost spent an hour cutting. Well, about for five minutes. frozen okay yeah I think it was just from my side okay I think this is too high Okay guys, so at this point, I think we are done with all the cutting. I'm just trimming this, the interfacing. And now we can we can start sewing finally. Okay, okay, yes. So basically, um, I'm going to start by sewing, joining my infinity straps together. No, you know, for this one, I had like, I didn't have one long continuous, one continuous piece. So I will join this together to form the continuous piece. Well, yeah, I think you guys will just see when I'm doing it. <laughs> doing thanks chico because you said i should adjust the camera can you guys hope you guys can hear me and see me clearly yeah so now for this i'll go ahead just mark the wrong side you need to mark the wrong side so you don't even though i don't think it matters much really because the fabric is almost the same on both sides anyway Okay. Anna, can you can you see me now? Because you asked for me to adjust the camera. Just let me know if you still need me to adjust it. Okay. So I'm just marking wrong sides. 
And now I'll go ahead and join right sides together. So this isn't the most ideal of situations because I would prefer if I didn't have to join, but yeah, I don't have enough. My fabric wasn't long enough, so it's fine. And I'm sure I missed all the tying and you know nothing. No one would notice. So I already changed my needle earlier to a needle that works well with lightweight fabric. So I think this is size 11. Yes, 11 or 14. I have a chat on my Instagram page that, honestly guys, I always refer to that chat, which is one of the reasons I like sharing things with you guys because, in fact, there are times where I refer to my old videos to see how I did something, just to be sure. So when you start, once you reverse, you can pull with this thread here. So your machine doesn't eat your fabric. I've also seen a video about putting paper at the beginning. I've not tried that, but that may be worth trying. continuous piece I'm just going to trim it down on the inside And next, we'll go ahead and just sew right sides together this way. So I'm just going to start from here. So basically, what I'm going to try to do is sew like one end. So I'll close one end and then sew right sides together all the way down. So I'm starting from here.
this fabric is actually like it's fine with a straight stitch because it's it's not a stretchy fabric at all but if you are working with a stretchy fabric i would say work with a stretch stitch which is there's this oh my god i don't know if you guys can see it can you see which is basically this second one here like in my machine it has like three straight stitches going like one two three four so that is the stretch stitch because the way it stitches is like it goes forward and backward forward and backward so it's like reinforcing the stitch yeah but for this particular fabric a straight stitch is just fine because it's not a stretchy fabric at all you just need to use the right stitch length you don't want something that is too long do you get so i think right now i'm working with 3 mm so i think that's just fine for me but just try your machine and just see what works fine yeah and then another tip is to just test on the portion of the fabric before you start sewing and you know join my two pieces together see how it looks see how you know you feel about this stitch yeah so now all you need to do this is very easy to turn you just bring it out this way but before doing that i'm just going to snip my thread and then you just want to trim this corner but let me work on the second one so no nope. here you are so i'll go ahead and join the second one as well all right sides together there's the right side like i did for the other piece so just join this way and then right sides together again this is like a lifesaver honestly because sometimes it just swallows the the fabric and it doesn't look good at all so i just manually move it and then drag it with this yeah. don't eat my fabric I'm actually thinking of investing in another sewing machine because this sewing machine is quite old. It belonged to my mother-in-law and then it was passed down to me. I used to use an industrial sewing machine when I was in Lagos, but I left that in Nigeria. Yeah, so sometimes when I start sewing fast, I'm used to sewing fast and I just forget that this machine cannot really handle so much speed. So when I, start, when I start sewing fast, it starts to make noise. So I have to like remind myself. Can you guys see? That's what it was. Or oh, do you mean blackhead sewing machine? Like butterfly? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, yeah, answer so I can know. Like those, yeah, I think, yeah, those regular butterfly sewing machines, the manual one. It's not so dark because it feels dark here. I hope you guys can see me. Okay, we're 
are done no not done like we are done with this part so basically i will trim just in the the scissors i'll trim this place because it's fine it doesn't really matter the best friends like honestly girl i love you anyway like now i'm going ahead to trim hi maria hi thanks for joining me oh it's okay well this will be available for a rewatch so you can always watch it again because you missed like the entire cutting process but yeah i'm just we're in the sewing part now so honestly guys like i'm having so much fun doing this oh i just turned that did you guys see me like i got carried away <laughs> i got carried away i forgot to tell you guys what i was doing so now i'm just going in to turn you know the loop the infinity wrap inside out so that's it now you can go ahead and give it a good press but i'm not going to bother with that i can always press it later so now we'll go to the part where we attach this to the attach the infinity to the waistband so for this you want to determine the middle of your waistband so this will be your center front I'm just notching it, notch it here as well, just gently. And now I will, where's my measuring tape? Now from here, I'm just going to measure six and a half inches. Remember I said my waist is 20, 26 divided by four, that's six and a half. So basically this is going to be my side. So you guys remember I cut, I just made my strip very long. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead to trim it later on. That's not a problem. But I just wanted to make sure I had enough. So now this is my side seam. So this is the side and this is the center front this way. So now what you want to do oh my god it's so long hmm. i should have made this part on top but that's okay it's fine now you basically want to place this like right sides together so i'm placing it facing down that way so that by the time we sew and bring it on top here it's going to look neat so now from this center seam I'm going to mark, where is my chalk? If you can see my chalk, please just tell me. Oh my god. What have I done? Okay. Let me just search. Okay, here it is. So now from this center front here, I'm not going to put that directly on the center front. No, we don't want that. But guys, if you are doing this alone, please I your know before you start doing this. It's just because this is a live session and I don't want to waste our time. I just want to do sharp sharp. So now I'm going to come, you can come in like one inch. You just want like, you want it to overlap a little bit. So I'm just going to measure what I have here, like seven and a half, which is perfect. So basically I'll come in one inch on this side and then come in one inch on this side as well to create like that overlap that we want. And now we'll go ahead and place, so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to place this one. Yeah, it's not placing it in the middle. 
I will bring it to this one inch on the other side this way and you guys can see it's still this is my side seam so that's fine and then I bring it one inch to the other side which is why I added like an extra one inch if you remember when I was cutting and you just want to go ahead and pin it down oh yes um Anna if you have manual sewing machine like I don't think you have any problem sewing this material the problem the material you may have problem with is stretch stitch and for that I know what people do is they put like paper underneath I think that helps yes because I used to use manual before and that worked for me but I just try to avoid stretch fabric as much as possible because honestly it's not easy to work with when you're working with a man also a machine so now this other part as well i'm going to do the same thing find out find the half inch point that i marked here and put it there you can make yours one inch it doesn't have to be half inch you can make yours half inch right it doesn't have to be one inch but the more you overlap here the more it covers up can you guys see so this is what it's looking like right now if it was in the middle yeah can you see like it's not really covering a lot and yes um i don't want to expose too much so that's why i'm overlapping mine by one inch so by the time i bring this here it's just perfect and just making sure i still have enough to get to my side seam which i do so that's just what I'm going to do because remember I marked my side seam as well so I will also pin this down and then just pin it to the rest of the garment just going to adjust it because I really want it to get to the side seam so something now nah, you see everything i've done just discard it it cannot work and you know why it cannot work because i just remembered my zipper is going to be by the side i'm not having my zipper at the back so all that thing i just did it's nonsense <laughs> so now i'm just going to go ahead and mark out my 13 and a half inches well so basically this is my side this is not my center front this is my side and this is because i'm having my zipper by the side i absolutely forgot about that if you're having your zipper at the back everything we just did will work out perfectly for you so if your skirt is one continuous strip and your zipper is at the back but because my zipper is in front my zipper is by the side rather that can't work so now that this is my side same I'll go ahead and mark out my six and a half inches. So basically, this is my center front now. Yeah. I'm snipped this already. And then I'll mark one inch to the side here and one inch to the side here. Just redoing everything I did. And then I'll mark six and a half inches. So this is my other side seam. So I'm just going to go through this really quickly because I've already wasted our time the first time. Basically, I've explained it the first time, so no need to explain it again. I'll just do it. I hope you guys understand. Again, your life will be so much easier if you've already ironed this. 
Je vais trop t'en mettre un. Ok. Now, finally paint it down the right way. Not whatever I thought I was doing the last time. So I'm just going in to adjust this nicely. Okay, so this is it. Now you want to go ahead and place your other this. I did not even that part very well. So now I can bring this open like this and basically just want to place these right sides together. And then sew it down. So you can sew this, I think I'm even going to do that. Sew this first to make sure this is secure before I put the other one. Thank God I realized like my mistake because that would have just been a disaster having to go back into losing it. So To use your half inch sewing allowance so i just realized i'm not using up to half inch and if you don't use up to your sewing allowance basically my waistband will end up bigger than i want and i don't want that i mean it will end up taller like higher than i want it so remove your pins don't sew over your pins understand like if you have any questions please ask for if you don't understand like what i'm doing please ask so the reason why i did it this way is because i'm having my zipper by the side so that first thing i was doing couldn't have worked this is the front can you guys see and because of that overlap we created it's not as exposed as it would have been if we did not create this overlap so now we can go ahead and attach the other part of this basically the facing and for this i'm just going to pin it right sides together
joining in from just let me know oh you stay in lagos great okay no so when next i come to lagos we are going to link up like i love your energy so i know the people i already have a list of people i need to link up with and i come to lagos because I know Anna is really going to be getting jealous now. <laughs> yeah, me too. looking like and i think i need to go back into riso because i can see i haven't or basically i either need to go back into riso or losing that bit there oh see can you guys see what i did this moved lower like this moved down so when i was sewing i basically did not pin it properly so i'm just going to loosen that and do it properly and this is why honestly it's just best to pin everything down it's just best to pin everything down because by the time you have to start going into losing it out it's not worth it, it takes more time correcting than actually sewing Okay. Yeah, I know, right? And I think I'm I really love the color I picked. I almost went with an orange fabric that I had at home, but I've been saving that fabric for so long. I don't even know what I'm saving it for. I don't know, but yeah, I know I'm going to find out what that perfect thing is for that fabric. I've had that fabric for like almost three years now. I may even show you guys after this, but it's not here. I have to go, go in to get it. So I'm just going into cor to losing that seam because I need to go back to sew that. I didn't do I did not do that well at all. And I think this is even good, so we can see that. Yeah, sometimes your seam ripper is your best friend. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to I think it's okay from this point, so now I can go back in to correct it. What? Make sure I'm sewing it right this time. So this skirt so I'll put this aside and for this okay we basically want to join right sides together 
but when joining right sides together um so you need to basically there's no determining where i want my zipper to be because it's going to be here so can you guys see this is where my zipper will be which is on the left side of my body right so i need to join it in such a way that i'm going to leave like part of the left side open but you don't even really need to worry too much i mean you can always go back into losing it out that's why we have a seam breaker right so i'm not even going to bother myself overthinking it So now I will join using my half inch seam allowance again. So I just want to measure to even see what I have here because if you remember at the beginning of this I said most times when you cut your fabric on like when you cut your fabric when you cut a circle skirt the waistband stretches yeah so I'm just going to check okay we had a bit of stretch but it's nothing like I think minusing that one inch was a very good idea, so that's one thing I'll start to do now. You guys won't believe I've joined wrong side to right side. Well, the part I decided to be the right side, but honestly, I think I'm just going to keep going do you guys think i should go in and losing this so just keep going i'm feeling lazy please comment because if I, it's so similar it doesn't look i'm just gonna keep going it doesn't look wrong it just looks like one continuous piece i think there is no right side and there is no wrong side so it's just make my life easier no need to dwell on it it's quite hot here. stress myself and my head
forgot to backstitch. That's why I'm going back in to sew. which is why I really wanted this fabric can you guys see it's just really flowy and nice okay so now this is the side that I'm going to be having my zipper on right so I'm just going to now go back into losing it like this doesn't even make sense now that I'm thinking about it but I'm, I won't lose it yet I will go over here to my ironing board can you guys see me And I'm just going to press my seam open and this will help me when it's time to basically attach my zipper because I will have that crease line that will come in handy. So I'm just going to press it lightly. You don't want to press down on this. I'm just going to use my seam. So that you don't have marks on the other side of your garment. So yeah. I also saw, I read something somewhere about putting paper underneath this place that it will help prevent the mark. But I'm just pressing it lightly, like I'm barely even putting it on the iron. Just, you see, it's already looking right. So now I can just press my seam all the way down, even though it's really the upper part I need, but that's fine. Oh yes, I'm pressing my seam as well to just make sure it's neat. That's true. You should press your seams open. I press my seam open I'm not even like really pressed it well but you guys can see it just looks good wow. I'm going to go back in so give it a light press make sure to use my seam the other side later so now that that is done I will go in now to open it up guys you guys won't believe what I just did So now you need to decide how long you want your zipper to be. So for me, I have a very long zipper. Where is it? Okay. Look how they are misplaced. <laughs> okay, found it. So it's very long, like, but this is the only thing I have at home. And it's the wrong color, I know, but it's an invisible zipper and it's black. 
I honestly don't mind. I can't be bothered. So I'm just going to use it like that. Well, we're in lockdown. I can't go out to buy anything. So I want my zipper to be about 9 inches. So basically, I'll cut off the rest. But I'm not going to cut it off now. I'll cut it off after I join it. So I'm going to open up this part to about nine and a half to about eight and a half inches or even eight inches and that is because the reason i'm opening it up to eight inches is because remember we're still going to attach the waistband so part of the zipper will go into like the waistband anyway which is like one three quarter of an inch so way too much now i need to go back in to close it let me tired of you i'm just going to mark this eight and a half inch point so i'm going to close it to that point message why you said any mistake in stuff a sandwich but see yeah so this is how trend starts like before you know people will be saying right and wrong sides together and that will be a thing okay now that that is done we can move on now let's put this to one side again Guys, I'm trying to remember. Okay, it's this way because the zipper is on this left side. Yeah. Hmm. Well, this side looks fine now. So basically, now you need to just, this is the right side and this is the wrong side. So I need to attach my skirt to the right side of the garment. So right side of the skirt to the right side of the garment. So now I'm going to notch the middle part of my skirt. Basically, center front to center front. I feel like I've done this so many times and we're already, we've been through this a lot. So we understand why this is being done. But basically, it's just to get the midpoint of this skirt. And then I have the midpoint of my garment here. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Let's go ahead and pin it down. So basically, I'm pinning right sides together. And then when you're pinning, 
don't forget pin to the i mark this side notch i'm going to pin to this place as well not just stretch out the fabric because this part is practically like the bias of the fabric so if you stretch it is going to stretch out so you need to be careful okay these pins are not good for this fabric i think they're a bit blunt because they are sort of like causing thread lines to show Need to do the same thing here to determine the center back. Hi, sis. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. And I forgot to turn off the iron. Don't do that, guys. <laughs> okay, so I think. No. Who's going in? I should have seven inches here. Yeah. Okay, so after pinning it down, we can go ahead and sew this down to the skirt. So it's coming together really nicely. So when sewing at this point, just use your waistband like as your guide don't stretch out the fabric that's the the circle skirt because that area will stretch out easily
so you guys can see i'm just taking my time because we don't want any pockets and you know any folds so yeah that's why you can see me taking my sweet time to sew this beautiful skirt This is what it's looking like so far. It's almost ready at this point, honestly. We just need to attach the zipper and then finish the inner part of the waistband. But I just want to show you guys and just ask you guys if we should go on or if you guys think, you know, we should end it here because it's almost two hours. Should we go on and attach the zipper or should we end it here? What do you guys think? because this is this is it right now we've attached the waistband we've attached the skirt this is what it's looking like and <laughs> oh no i just saw a message that all oh, guys so so fast and my trend never breaks I would say it's because I'm an expert. I think that also determines on the quality of your... That also depends. Not determines. What kind of English am I speaking? That also depends on the quality of your thread. And I guess the sewing machine you're using. Because guys, I've used some annoying threads. Like, God. I think just when you go to the market. Like, this thread here. Yeah, I bought it from Lagos. And they are really, really good. Like, I bought one of it. And it was so good. I went back there, guys. And I bought, like almost 50 different colors of threads because it was so good so i think this one with the yellow inner cap is really really good so okay i'm actually set to continue till the end no problem your wish is my command guys so now oh my god it's looking so pretty <laughs> okay i need to get it together just checking to make sure I didn't make any mistakes here. Anyway, like Anna said, any mistake is a style, so I'm not so worried about making mistakes. So now it's time to attach the zipper, and I guess because of all these ropes, this thing is just everywhere. Okay, let me get the ropes out of the way so I can focus on the skirt. So basically, now I will go in and trim off this excess that i have here remember i have some excess here oh another thing you can do to really bring the whole look together it doesn't make much of a difference but let's just pretend it does is to so you can under stitch this seam allowance to the in inside of your facing so i'm going to do that i think it just has a nice look yeah so i'll do that but not yet so i'll just go in now and trim I'll trim this this seam allowance here. that and yes Lara like hmm, it makes a huge difference honestly there were times when I would be sewing I would actually think it's the fabric or you know it would just uh, honestly I saw fat before I realized the secrets so I'm sharing the secrets with you all freely 
so i hope you guys can see what i'm doing so now i just want to go in and trim off the excess waistband that we have here when trimming off one So now to attach the zipper, after determining how long you want your zipper to be and loosening this side, what you want to do, okay, this is the zipper, I couldn't find it again. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing too because I feel like the, the long rope is just coming here. Yeah. But basically at this point now, you want to go ahead and just make sure that your seams on both sides, you know, are aligning or as much as possible. So we'll be attaching the zipper, but just to this edge here. In fact, I can go in and loosen this edge. And after attaching the zipper, I can close it back. Yeah, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So basically, I'm loosening this, the facing from the, the facing of the waistband from the waistband, just about one inch, just after, just for me to attach the zipper. And now for the zipper, you basically want to place your zipper right sides together. Can you guys see? So. going to place it and then place it this this place that we are on it to come in handy now because you can just place your zipper around that line and just pin it down i'll still go in and overlock all of these edges but again because this is a live broadcast i just want to do the important bits just for you guys to know how to sew this from start to finish So I'll go ahead now and pin, do the same thing I just did here for the other side. So in fact, I can even just sew this first before doing it for the other side. So let's do that because I want to show you guys something. Guys, give me a minute. I want to open the door. It's a bit hot. I don't know if the heater is on. Is the heat on? Okay, thank you. Okay, so the heater is off now. So now I'll go ahead and change my foot 
change it to my zipper foot which is here I'm just going to put this and then you can go in and just sew this sew as close to the edge as you can this is not an invisible zipper foot so I still need to do some work but I think I will invest in an, well not invest, I don't think it's that expensive but I think I will get an invisible zipper foot because I use a lot of invisible, invisible zips so it just makes sense to have an invisible, invisible zip foot okay so now I can go ahead and sew my zip zip so I don't even I don't rush I take my time but there's just something about a well finished zipper and I guess because now I'm even using black <laughs> which I'm not supposed to be doing but who cares not me <laughs> who said this rules anyway Okay, so now after sewing that, I want you to just go ahead and close your zipper. Can you see? And basically match it, match this other side up to it to so just make sure that everything you know aligns. And next, what you want to do is where this waistband is on this part of the zipper, you want to go ahead and notch it, can you see, on the opposite side. And I learned this from Sewing Julie blog. I follow her on Instagram. So after doing this, now when you are attaching the other part of the zipper, you make sure that that part that notched part of this zip is on this place here is on this band so that way you have a matching band when you're done so that's the trick that's the trick i learned so now you can just open this up you don't even need to have this closed Just pin right sides together. So ideally you should switch your zipper foot to the other side and attach this using this part of the zipper but honestly I don't like doing that. I don't find it easy to do that so I just sew from the bottom up using this same part of the zipper 
I don't know if that's allowed, but who said these rules anyway? going to pin, pin it all the way so it can be easy to work on. Guys, this part can be a bit tricky but just take your time you want to make sure you sew it right Okay guys, so before I start, let me even check if this attached properly. So this is it. It's just like I think it's almost perfect, just almost perfect. But honestly, it works. And see, no one can even tell it's a black zipper, will it? except you come like really, really close. But you can see this works perfectly. So and uh -uh. now, what you want to do is open up your zipper back. You guys can see and then you want to go ahead and just can you see so close to the zipper like to cover up this edge just so close to the zipper this way ideally at this point I should go ahead and just you know overlock these edges but I'll do that afterwards so I'm going to sew right sides together of the waistband to the facing and then i would also finish up this stitch here that i'm losing out to attach the zipper so i'll do the same thing for the two sides so because i still want to sew close to the zipper i'm going to keep my zipper foot on because that would make my life easier
In fact, I think something to do. Yeah. So can you guys see what I've done? So I've just folded this edge because I'm going to fold this in anyway. So I think doing this will make my life easier. I don't know if I've done this before, but I just have a good feeling about this. So let's let's see. I'll pin it down. Thanks, Hannah. Oh. So it's two hours, exactly two hours now. Hopefully, we should be done in the next few minutes because after attaching the zipper, it's just to attach the other part of the waistband and we are done. So, and the cutting process took really long because of the fabric we're working with. So when you get to this end, you want to turn this and then sew that part. Just make sure you are not sewing on the stopper, on the zip stopper. You don't want to do that here. Yeah. I actually wasn't supposed to sew this far, but it's fine. So now you need to trim this upper part, but let's just see before we even trim. Can you see? So this is what it will look like, and that is what we want. And this is our zip well hidden. And by the time we are sewing this down, it's just easy because we folded it in. Oh my God, guys, why am I just realizing this? I should start doing this all the time. Yep. Okay. <sighs> guys, I need to go back in to redo this part. So I forgot to tell you guys, when you are sewing, you want to sew the seam allowance to the upper part you can see my my seam allowance here is facing down we don't want that we want it facing up just like it's facing here so i will just lose in that part and do it ah, my seam ripper again too long so once we are done sewing it i'm just going to show you guys actually i won't be hemming it in this video because i don't know if you guys know with circle skirts it's advisable to leave it overnight and let it drop like i'll put it on my mannequin here and just let let it drop because some parts may end up being uneven and they just advise to leave it overnight that way and then before you go in just check that you're okay with it before you go in to hem it so that's what i'm going to do but yes i will show you guys how to style it like some ju basically just some quick styling nothing deep but maybe in another video i'll actually dress up you know and show you guys okay why am i so excited <laughs> because these days we are not going anywhere so like any reason to dress up i'm taking it best believe i'm taking it <laughs> yeah but that won't be another video so this video like once i've finished the hem but i'll try to make it like soon so maybe by tomorrow after sewing the hem i'll quickly do the video and then edit it and have it out on monday So 
So even if you don't have a a mannequin, once you say a circle skirt, you can just take a hanger and then use pegs, just hang it up. Do you get? Leave it overnight, let it drop. Especially if you're using a light material like this, it's very advisable. Or even heavy materials, honestly, because once you cut along that bias side, like along the circle here, yeah, it just stretches out sometimes. Okay, so now that that bit is done, remember what I did for the other side where I folded it in this way? Just making sure to match this place. Yep. So basically, just folding your half inch seam allowance. I'll pin it down. back in and yeah basically just do what I did for the other side on this side as well and I did not realize I was sewing on the stopper so now I need to quickly change my needle um, I don't have the okay give me a minute I need to get another pack because I'm out of that particular size in this pack I have here
Okay. How do they bring out this needle? The other pack I used was much easier to bring out than this. So it's fine. Okay. So I'm going to remove this one. Right size because I have this over here. Okay, it's in now. <laughs> yes, Natalie, don't use my fabric scissors. Like, so now I need to really watch what I'm doing on this side so I don't repeat, have a repeat of this. I'm going to go back into so. Guys, you know I just realized that this is the first time I'm actually putting my thread back in. I'm so proud of myself. Like most times when I'm sewing, I just I don't realize that I don't have enough thread down. And then I start sewing and I realize my thread has gone all the way back up and I need to like I don't know if you guys get anyway. Now Let's try this again. skirt isn't looking pretty at all but let's see what the outer part is looking like yeah it's looking good i'm just gonna zip it to see how i feel okay so this is what it's looking like i can't even put like a you know the ukanai thing just here just to bring it like all together but that may not be necessary but yes so now i'm just going to go in and trim off all these excesses that i have here and basically you just want to like snip this really close to your seam but don't break your seam that way and then bring this out here so yeah. What's that noise? Sorry guys. And now where is the other zipper? It's here. Oh L Anna, I made a joke about that's it um there's something i saw one time about it's okay to cut off negative people from your life but don't use my fabric scissors and that's because it's not advisable to use your fabric scissors to do other things that aren't like related to sewing so natalie was just saying oh you know that that's a good line i hope that's what you're asking about Anyway, guys, this uh, this thing has been going on for over two hours now. Oh my god! So this is what our dress looks like so far. Can you guys see? This is really nice. So basically, to fin to finish up this zipper, you will just need to do this. Cut it off. Cut off the excess you don't need. I will go in and just sew along this place so the zipper doesn't open up. So I think that should be okay to keep it in place. And 
what I personally like to do, there are different ways to finish off this edge here. But what I like to do is, I like to take a piece of the fabric. I'm just going to use this as an example. I like to take a small piece of the fabric. I'm not going to do that now, but I just want to show you guys. And just fold it nicely this way. I'll cut it off to just make sure I have the right length that I want. Can you guys see? I'll finish off this edge and finish off the other edge. And then just sew it over this. So just cover that edge nicely. So that's how I like to finish the inner part of my zippers when I cut them off. But I won't do that here because, like I said, this video has gone on for long enough so basically the last thing we need to do now is to finish off this inner edge of the this inner waistband and to do this there are two options you can either take it to your ironing board iron it down well i would need to do that take it to my ironing board iron it down and then once you iron down your half inch of seam allowance, you can use your needle and thread to sew a blind stitch all around this. Or you can just sew this down if you don't mind the stitch showing on the other part of your fabric. And for this skirt, I don't mind the stitch showing. For this dress, I don't mind the stitch, so the stitch showing on the other part. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to iron it down pin it down and then sew it on this other part like just sew it down it will show on this part but it's not a problem like for this style i don't mind but yes that's all that is left to do but i'm not going to be doing that here because it's over two hours and like i said apart from this, apart from that like the skirt is basically ready once you finish off the inner part by just ironing it using your needle and thread you finish that part off or so if you're sewing machine and then you finish the hem that's it but i'm just going to put this on my mannequin now for you guys to see bear in mind this mannequin is bigger than me so if it doesn't fit that's why I may not be able to zip it up. So can you guys see? I can't zip it up because this mannequin, the waist is 28, my waist is 26. But when I was in Lagos, this was the smallest size they had. So I just bought it. I brought this from Lagos. So I'm just going to pin it down. I may set it at some point to get something that is my exact size so i hope you guys can see this is what our dress looks like it's actually so pretty guys like obviously we can zip it because like I said this mannequin is bigger than me but we can even zip it halfway but you guys can see so basically you can wear this like this wrap it to the front under your arm and then tie it this way please if you can see and if you can hear just leave a or if I need to move this Do I need to move my camera up so you guys can see better? Let me just... Oh, okay. Give me a minute. So, can you guys see? This is one way to wear it. And this line is here because remember we did not have enough fabric and 
initially I should actually have put this at the back so when you tie it that was what I thought I did but at the time I realized that wasn't what I did I just wanted to keep going yeah it's not so pretty but it's not bad actually honestly so if you if you guys are going to be attaching make sure you attach towards the back of your fabric so it doesn't show in front here so this this is it like you can wear it in different ways you can bring this to the side like this just bring both of them to the side arrange it nicely can you see obviously and then bring it back around this way you can bring one to the front this way and yeah okay it's not long enough to do this style but basically we can just wrap it around and then tie it in front this way can you see that's another style and then you can just arrange this nicely so there are basically like so many different styles you can do you can also do something like this can you see and just take this to the back then bring this to the front and tie it obviously if you are doing this on your body you'll be able to really arrange it properly and make sure you cover your boobs yeah except you're wearing a shirt underneath but you guys get the point right so this is another way to style it like there are so many different ways to style these guys like the possibilities are almost endless <laughs> so yeah but this is it like I just need to do the put the finishing touches which is basically just finish the inner part of the waistband and finish the hem but I don't want to do that because to do that I need to take this to my ironing board and really iron the inner part like the seam allowance thing and that may take time and I don't want to like drag this life is almost two hours 30 minutes now so I think it's about time we ended it but yeah this is this is our infinity dress and you can even make your your tie longer like so you can even play around even more with it it, it depends on you really so what do you guys think do you guys think this is a good time to bring this life to an end Hi Tashana, Hi. thanks for joining us, even though we're almost through. I don't know how long you've been here, but yeah, this has been nice. I've had so much fun with everyone here. So I think um, at this point, the two people that will be getting the fabric, it's really, it's an easy choice for me actually, and I'm so glad I decided to go with two people and um that will be natalie or malara savage um, i'll be sending you three yards of african print fabric so send me a message on instagram after this so we can discuss um, logistics and how to get across to you and the second person will be anna and i'll be sending you three yards of ankara fabric so send me we'll talk after this and you know we'll talk about logistics and how to get across to you Thank you so much for joining me. This has been amazing, honestly. Like, I've had such an amazing time. And I hope you guys understand everything I did, why I did what I did, and, you know, the mistakes I make. Please don't make the same mistakes. Like, the point of this channel is so you guys can learn from me and be better. Yeah. And avoid, my, avoid the mistakes that I make. So, yeah. Um, I think this is a good time to end this live. Thank you so much, everyone that joined me. Honestly, now I don't want it to end, which is strange. Like, just end it already. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, guys. I will see you around. I'll see you on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. So that's it. Bye, guys.